Hey fellow Vault Warriors, it's Angry Turtle and another episode of Underrated Weapons. That was a while since I did the last one and I'm doing this one because finally I can do episode about weapon I wanted to do for a long time. And I mean Gatling Plasma. But there was no reason to do it before, mainly because of the respawn bug, like whatever you change into goo piles could not respawn. I mean, it was respawning, but naked and unkillable, what was really bad. That's why I didn't want to do the video about this weapon before. Plus, it's even better now, because when it comes to one wasteland nerf, uh, I will do a quick introduction to that, it hit ballistic weapon more than energy weapon from very simple reason. Basically, how the damage calculation works in this weapon for ballistic weapons, the armor penetration coefficient is based on paper damage, which means whatever Peep Boy is showing it here, that for ballistic weapon, based on this number, you will calculate how much armor you penetrate. And you can boost damage and penetrate more armor. In case of energy weapon, it's constant. It's not changing based on your damage. In base, it's only based on weapon very basic damage. Therefore, in the case of energy weapons, the damage nerf was less severe because it's, it did not affect armor penetration of those weapons at all. It dropped a little bit of damage, but not as severe as in case of ballistic weapons. But before we start and there will be more showcase and more talking about this weapon, I want to welcome my latest supporters from Patreon. It's Flash2000. Jean Franco is Lamar, Willy2561, Daisuke Takeda, and Embor. Welcome into Tartus Army, guys. I'm so grateful for your support. And now let's go and start shooting something. Let me equip this weapon, and I will talk more about this weapon. And maybe I should give you a quick disclaimer what I mean by underrated weapons. And basically I mean the weapons that are good and in the same time I barely see anyone using on like daily basis. I sometimes see people using those weapons but if it's like a minority of people rarely anyone using and I know in case of legacy everyone is using, but that's a different story. This is not a legacy. This is a normal weapon obtainable in the game and that's performing insanely well, especially on this full health heavy gunner build that's almost done. I will not show you the full build because it's not done yet, but next video I finish this build and I will show you a full heavy gunner build as I know so many of you ask me for that. It will be on the channel, don't worry about it. I'm working on it, I just need couple more levels to finish this build as, yeah, I scrapped cars that I should keep and now I cannot get them back, I need to level up. And maybe for the comparison purposes, let me take final word, that's basically 50 cal with the same effects. And you can clearly see that it's performed really well, but in the same time it's slightly weaker for full health heavy gunner than a Gatling Plasma. It's a little bit less damage, what's a surprise, because it used to be way more damage. I figured that it would be way easier to showcase this weapon in daily ops, especially that we have super mutants in here, that's perfect scenario. And if you notice, I'm using ultra sight ammo for the Gatling Plasma, and I was comparing for 50 cal, that's not ultra sight, but I will go back to this topic when I will be at the workbench in my camp. I will discuss it more, why it's the case. There is one downside though. As you can see, I will get random ammo instead what I need from those mobs, as you cannot get cores, they cannot drop the core for you. Then you just do not bother picking up anything, that's maybe even better. And as you can see, damage is crazy and what's important, the accuracy is really good. There are downsides, like of course you need to spin up this barrel and goo pies are ugly, but at least now they do not break anything. They do work, what's really important, they do work as intended, almost as intended, there are some still problems, but not as severe as used to be. And as you can see, recoil is not bad, damage is really good, 
DPS is really good, clip size is amazing, cost of the ammo is super low, like if you have uh, ammo factory legendary perk max out and combine it with ammo smith, you will get 9 cores from one flux, 9 plasma cores from one flux and each plasma core is over 300 rounds. That's really amazing value. That's like 3000 ammo from one flux. That's the best value ever. And here you can see the Gatling Plasma, but this is a legacy version. And this one is not underrated. This one is overpowered, but the reason legacy weapons are overpowered is the splitter and wrong damage calculation after you install it on explosive weapons. Like, maybe one day, one day Bethesda will fix it and legacy will not be so great anymore. We'll see about that. And you see, 350 rounds from a single core. That's amazing! Over 3k ammo per single craft. Another downside, as I'm talking about downsides, if you aim down the sides in first person, it's not perfect because this, as you can see, this green aiming thingy is flying around a lot compared to when you actually aim. And another downside, not a big one, projectiles are slightly slower than like a 50 cal, but not super slow, then you shouldn't be too worried about it. And why I pick anti-armor version? Like, as I said, the armor penetration coefficient is different than for ballistic weapons, therefore anti-armor legendary effects gives you much more value I mean, not, not, maybe not much more, but more value than in case of ballistic weapons. And if I will go for something like chunkies or bloodied, if I will be bloody build, I will probably get the same or a little bit less value out of it. It's why anti-armor is so good, there is no downside and great value out of it, especially if you have energy weapons with anti-armor legendary effect. Faster fire rate is great as well and reduced weight. Uh, one of the reasons I have only standard nozzle instead of anything else, because other nozzles like you don't want splitter that change it into plasma flamer, because it barely does any damage. It's only worth it if you have legacy version and other, other modification supposed to improve your accuracy by a little bit, but as this is weightless, it would add like three pounds to my weight without much difference in accuracy. And you can see, even if enemies are quite far away, I can still snipe them with this weapon. Unlike with 50 cal. 50 cal, unfortunately, is not so accurate. And shooting something far away is a little bit more difficult than in here. As here, crosshair is very tight. And now we have boss, like a final enemy we need to fight. Let's see how well I can do. If I get first. Yep, I'm first. Look at that, I'm doing really good damage. If I can hit the head, it's like crazy damage. And he's dead. And random ammo, of course. And good news is that when you complete the quest, actually the final reward, you will get your Ultra Sight Plasma course. Then it's not too bad. Definitely you will get your course back. I doubt you use much more ammo per operation than two Ultra Sight Plasma course. It's like 700 rounds, that's usually enough. And yes, I already did it before, therefore no rare rewards. And if we look back in time a little bit, you probably remember, I did a video about what's the best heavy gun, and I didn't even put Gatling Plasma on the list there, because it was so bad back then. And mainly what changed, if you do not know, Gatling Plasma was buffed in Wastelanders, during the Wastelanders. It was quite a decent buff to the base damage. Then what happened? We have one wasteland and indirectly this weapon was buffed because Nerf didn't hit it so hard as every other ballistic weapon. And now what I wanted to show you. If I go into receivers, it's the case of standard and prime. As you can clearly see, if I install prime receiver, what I have installed, if I will reduce it to standard, the receiver bonus is multiplicative for this weapon. It's probably because damage calculation from energy weapons is different than for ballistic weapons, because if we go and take a look on Final Ward, the 50 cal that I really like, my favorite, and here I try to change a receiver. So you can see if I put prime, I'm getting 11 extra damage. That's like a little bit over 10%. It's additive to my other bonuses. 
It should be 25 to 30 percent. I'm not getting it. Because it's additive bonus in case of ballistic weapon. That's why so big difference. Like here I will have 100. Fire rate 114. Assuming those numbers are accurate. And in case of Gatling Plasma. I'm getting 143. That's significant enough damage boost to overcome the downside of inferior damage calculation for energy weapons. And it's why I like it so much. Super cheap ammo, great accuracy, really good damage, especially versus bosses if you have anti-armor version. Downside, you need to spin it up, aim down sights is not perfect, and projectiles are slightly slower than ballistic weapon equivalents. To summarize it objectively, I will say that Gatling Plasma is at least as good as 50 cal, even though 50 cal will always be my favorite. I need to be honest here at this moment, after all these changes, Gatling Plasma is as good as 50 cal. In case of DPS, it's even better. But there are downsides, that's why I'm, I will not say it's overall better. And as always, I'll be waiting for your opinions about this weapon in comment section. I'm super happy that I was able to finally do video about it without being worried about everyone using this weapon and breaking spawns for everyone else. Now you do not break spawns. There are still ugly goo piles, but they do not break spawns, then that part was fixed. Enjoy your Gatling Plasma if you have one. Unfortunately, market prices can go up now, as this happened last time I show underrated weapons, then we'll see. Be fast on market 76. There are still some, I think. And as always, thank you a lot for watching and see you guys in the next one.